Maybe we should start, huh? Okay. All right. Here we go. Here, here, here. The Parks Committee meeting is now in session. We'll do a roll call. Alder Weary. Aye. Here. Present. Alder uh, Gerlach. Hmm. Yeah, I don't uh, have um, Alder Scannell yeah. and Alder Gerlach. For some reason on Civic Clerk, it's not showing you guys as present. Oh. But I'm obviously here. <laughs> you are. Oh, you know what? I went in before it asked, before, you know, I, I could click on present and voting. That that button wasn't on. I could go back and out and in. Or I could just mark you uh, present and voting. Oh, well, I, it's too late. I already did it. Oh, you just did it. But, and I just talked to Alda Gerlach today, so she said she was coming. I don't know. Huh. Well, Alder Burnett? Yes. Okay, Alder Burnett's present. Uh, we got a quorum, so uh, hopefully Alder Gerlach will be joining us very shortly. She is on her way. I just um, heard from her. She'll be right there. All right. Okay, well, we can, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> we can clear up some of the other uh, businesses we got here with. Uh, I'll take a motion to uh, approve the, let me see, is it agenda or minutes first? The agenda. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have an agenda. I uh, take a motion to approve our minutes from our last meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Alder Burnett. Second. By Aye. Alder Aye. Okay, and uh, opposed? I'll wait a minute. <coughs> and Alder Gerlach is now with us. Thank I'm so sorry. I, I had it wrong on my calendar, and I was writing an email to a constituent who's very nervous about East Town Mall. Well, that sounds like a great thing. But anyway, that's you know, you know there. Uh, welcome. Uh, all are now present. Uh, we just uh, approved the agenda and the minutes. Do you have any objections to those you care to jump into before we get into the regular business? Holder Gerlach? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get it. No, I'm good. I'm going to get into civic clerk right now. All right. Then on to regular business. Consideration with possible action and adopting a resolution in support of World Migratory Bird Day. Staff. All right. Uh, we are excited and honored once again to be named a bird city. Uh, we are one of the premier bird cities in the state. We are, uh, Green Bay is one of the first 15, and we continually retain the high flyer status for all of our good conservation and awareness practices. Uh, since the inception, uh, we have raised, uh, this group has raised and put over $10,000 into urban habitat and bird protection efforts. Um, we believe this is, uh, of course, a great benefit to our city. Uh, we wanna thank uh, Nancy Nabak and the Bird City High Flyers for their continued efforts in Green Bay, and what we're uh, asking for is to um, approve uh, adopting a resolution which will be officially adopted at council on Tuesday the 19th, and that's what it's, uh, it's in your packet, and it's also uh, dated the 19th, so that's what we're asking to move forward with uh, bringing that to council. Any questions, comments, concerns by uh, fellow alders? Great job, excellent. Move Sounds wonderful. Oh, 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 very, good, very good job. No, I just wanted to say good job, and I've got three bird feeders out. I I like to see them come by our house too. So that's good for that's good for the city and good for the area. Good job. I'll take a motion. I move that we approve the resolution. Second. Well, motion by Alder Gallock, seconded by Alder Weary. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, the, the birds of a feather can flock together. Item two, consideration of possible action on approving the request by Old Main Street, Inc., allowing them to fund and install a Green Bay Parker, Packer, Parker, 
Packer themed light display at Whitney Park. Uh, staff. Yeah. Uh, so here we are again. Uh, Whitney Park, the old Main Street, uh, is here seeking again to uh, get approval to add something to one of our parks to uh, help the Packers. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't need the extra push, but hopefully we, you know, this will help them get the extra push through the playoffs to the Super Bowl. But you know, I'm starting to feel like maybe uh, downtown and Old Street would just keep them on the agenda every month. They seem to be bringing something back to uh, approve, which is awesome. So. Um, Sally is here from Old Main Street Incorporated. If you do want to uh, ask her any questions, um, and due to the quick turnaround of this, uh, we're actually asking for permission, um, and we'll ask for the recommendation uh, or the approval to be contingent upon the hold harmless and all cost and labor being the responsibility of Old Main Street. Uh, but our our staff have uh, met on site, and we do approve their concept in general for what they're doing. They're looking to light up. Kind of the big main tree at Whitney uh, with um, green and gold or green and yellow, uh, whatever lighting, and then also some signage that say like "Go Pack Go" uh, and some other features. So, yeah, uh, we're we're good with their plan um, uh, to move forward. But definitely, uh, if you want to talk to Sally, or uh, she is, I, th I believe, on the call. Yep, I, I see her. Uh, the, any of the alders wish to open the floor? Or are we good to go? Or I have no problem with it. I move to approve. Move to approve by Alder Jesse. Oh, Alder Jesse, Alder Burnett. Uh, I'll second, uh, if I could. Uh, I think it's 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 great. It's nice to see this. Uh, you know, we need more more positive, happy things right now, and it's good to see that. So, thanks for doing it. Well, I think it's a bright idea. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Seconded by Alder Weary. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Light her up. Thank you. Great job. Keep it up. Close the console, Randy. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'm not the brightest bulb. Are we, I, I'm sorry, uh, James, I haven't been waiting for you. Are we <coughs> to go to... Okay, yeah. Uh, consider... That's it. I think there's anything on the committee, on the agenda, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's nothing, it. We're done. Nothing else? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, kidding every, I'm kidding everybody. Consideration with possible action on the use of the fat tire bikers at Hanisra Park. Uh, Alder Burnett, do you wish to uh, jump in first or would you like to hear from staff first? I can kind of kick it off and then James will fill in the details, but. Um, real quick, can, can I just real quick, can, uh, if anybody, maybe it'd be convenient mm -hmm. uh, to have people uh, put their name maybe in the comment box. Anybody that's want to speak so we can kind of keep track of who's maybe next speaking. Um, and then, you know, if we could keep people's comments maybe, you know, to the point in general, you know, maybe two to three minutes. Uh, there is a lot of people here, I believe, tonight to talk on this subject. So I just want to be considerate to everybody talking, but also, you know, maybe, and, you know, when you do announce your name, also your address, you know, for us, we keep track of everybody uh, that, that speaks on these topics. So if, if you guys want to start adding your name to the comment box maybe, and we'll kind of keep a running tab, but everybody that wants to speak, of course, will be allowed to, so. Yeah. Thanks, James. I was going to bring that up and got so carried away here, I forgot. Yeah, so normally when we meet together, you would have to fill out a form to speak. So we're just asking that you uh, put your name in the, in the uh, chat box and then uh, we'll know, we'll have a good idea how many we needed. Uh, how much time we're going to need, and uh, um, we'll go proceed accordingly. But uh, for now, Jesse. Yes. Uh, no, that's fine. Thank you, All Chair. I can see is your name is Jesse. The Burnett yeah. is blocked out. Well, so no problem. Uh, just wanted to briefly, briefly give a quick synopsis of how we got here. Uh, in um, prior to February of last year, the city was approached to find fat tire bike trails somewhere on the west side. There were trails at Barrett's Creek, but nowhere on the west side of Green Bay uh, in the city uh -huh. limits. Uh, looked at Colton Park, uh, at Ken Ewers Park, and it all went away. Uh, I don't know both for whatever that. reason. Excuse me, please yeah. mute yourselves. The, we're getting mute. a lot of some chatter here. Please, if you're not muted, please mute yourselves until you're called upon to speak. So, yeah. Hold up a minute. Okay, so um, found uh, for whatever reason, those two locations were not uh, chosen. So uh, 
the Parks Department did a trial basis at Inostra Park in February, so almost a year ago. At that time, I uh, had about five or six constituents reach out to me, frustrated, upset, concerned about uh, the fat tire bike usage at that location, felt like they weren't consulted, came before this very committee uh, in about February or March. And at that time, the Parks Department said that they hadn't received any negative comments other than the ones I brought forward. If anything, the comments were overwhelmingly positive. So fast forward to October, November, I thought this would be a good discussion to bring forward uh, mm -hmm. kind of proactively. I regret that I should have done it even two months earlier than what I did. But anyways, at the last Parks Committee, we decided to postpone this discussion until today, basically to allow two months so that the neighborhood could be better informed, any interested people or uh, constituents, users, even bicyclists themselves could have a better understanding of the situation and have their voices heard. So two weeks ago, I believe two weeks ago today, uh, Mr. Anderson and myself from the Parks Department uh, met at Hinasra Park, and I would say about 50 to 75 members of the public were there, those in support of the fat tire bikes being used at the park, those who were against it, and I would say a combination of, of the two, people who live in the neighborhood that maybe like the idea, but just not there. So um, the Parks Department did send out a survey. The survey results were emailed to us. I will say one thing about the survey. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a, based on the public comments I had, I don't know if it's a fair representation of everyone who would be interested in responding, um, basically because getting the word out to the neighbors through that entire district has been a little more cumbersome. Um, but I did notice more Facebook feedback. A lot of people reached out to me by phone, email, and, uh, here we are. So I really wanted to allow both sides to be heard. And I think up until this point that has happened much better than it did two months ago. So I'll say my own personal opinions and recommendations until um, we allowed the public to speak. But uh, Mr. Chairman, I would encourage you to allow James to kind of fill in the blanks of what I missed before doing so. James? Yeah, so uh, some of the uh, items um, will be a little repeated from what Alder Burnett said, um, but just to give you everybody, um, and maybe it's just because I like history, but we'll start with a little history of Hennister Park here. Uh, back in 1965, the Plan Commission approved uh, Hennister becoming a park. So in the Mohawk language, uh, Hennister means top of the hill. And this was previously a dump site. So around that, at that time, uh, the park became a park and also became the site for the Southwest High School cross country ski team, uh, which unfortunately uh, no longer exists. But um, there are some club teams in the area that Southwest, uh, you know, uh, people would, you know, go ahead in. So over the decades, uh, the parks department has groomed the trails in the winter when we have adequate snow for classic cross country skiers to enjoy. You know, overall, looking at the big picture, uh, we have a lot of opportunities for people to cross country ski in our park system. We have Baird Creek, Wildlife Sanctuary, Perkins, Colburn, Hanisra, Preble, McAuliffe, Ted Fritch. You know, so ever since I've been working at the parks department, which is going on 13 years now, uh, there has always been a little bit of a concern over the use of the trails, particularly in the winter. You know, when trails are groomed for cross country skiing, um, you know, if, if you or go on the trails and disrupt the grooves that people use for classic cross-country skiing, it really creates a, an, not a great user experience for cross-country skiers. So prior to even having any dedicated fat tire biking trails being groomed for winter use, which has just been impl implemented on trial basis recently, the park department has recent input from users over the years about people walking, hiking, uh, on the groomed cross-country ski trails, which I said ruins the user experience, as well as dogs walking on the trails and also uh, being off-leash within the park. So a lot of the concerns we received prior to even this fat tire bike conversation were um, 
you know, a lot to do with some of the feedback also in the comments that we received, both at the public input meeting we hosted on December 30th, as Elder Burnett commented on, which we did have close to 60 to 70 people at that, as well as uh, some of the communications we received and the feedback from the public survey we put it over the last two weeks, which I will say uh, in general, I mean, we don't, we don't put out a, a lot of surveys, I would say, but the surveys that we do put out, um, we've never received this kind of feedback in this amount of time. Uh, we received over 275 responses uh, on this survey. I have it in front of me. Uh, in, uh, we have, I have 65 pages of comments printed off. So uh, it, it was a lot of uh, information which really helped. Uh, so I appreciate the public and them responding to that. Uh, which brings us up to our current topic of conversation, which is fat tire biking, uh, and in particular at Hinesra Park. So overall, uh, as Elder Burnett said, uh, due to the popularity and trend of fat tire biking in our community over the last two or three years, the Parks Department was uh, you know, tasked and, and, and knew that we needed to proactively work towards location to provide a dedicated fat tire bike trail system uh, in our park system, especially in particular on the west side. So we do have, you know, currently we have Baird Creek on the east side, which is somewhat of a regional attraction. I mean, it's kind of a gateway into Door County, gateway into north towards Marquette. Uh, and to be honest, it has even so much more potential uh, for fat tire biking and, and mountain biking and trails at Baird Creek. Um, with, and that's on the east side, you know, with the Brown County's reforestation camp, uh, more out toward, uh, we felt the need to focus on the west side and possible solutions. So over the last two or three years, we did discuss and we vetted through the process of potential locations um, like Colburn, Ken Years, Perkins, Ted Fritch, um, all of them which were considered thoroughly and vetted with staff and also the user groups, uh, but they would deem to be underserving based on multiple aspects and criteria as well as the ability to have a genuinely good uh, recreational experience when it comes to fat tire biking. So Hanisra was the park time and time again uh, that became kind of that viable option for the experience that fat tire bikers were looking for. And as a parks department, um, like Alder Burnett said, on a trial basis last February, we attempted to groom uh, just to try out what it would be, you know, to groom some fat tire bike trails uh, within Hanisra. So the, um, and that was last February, kind of tried the trial. It came to parks committee on March 25th of 2020 with a discussion of possible action on the status of fat tire bike usage at Hennesser Park. Now at that time, the motion was to just receive and place on file. I'm not sure that probably also had to do with uh, the fact that we really didn't have great snow and we didn't really have a great chance to get a trial going. I think we only had one small, short uh, you know, snowfall and we really ha only had about a week or a week and a half of actual trail use when we started the trial to actually implement it because it got really, uh, you know, spring-like weather. I don't know if you guys remember, but it was like 70 degrees in, in March last year at one point. And uh, we really didn't have a great trial basis to try this out. And also, uh, as everybody knows, the, the COVID era uh, hit us and it kind of uh, ruined any momentum we had. But the little bit of momentum we had with fat tire biking uh, really raised some awareness to the fact that um, you know, the focus of the conversation uh, was, you know, hey, this is a, a, a good site to go fat tire biking and mountain biking. Now, I will say, uh, you know, in general, I want everybody to be aware that Anisra Park was never a spot where you couldn't bike. It was never prohibited. Uh, this whole trial and then the ensuing talk about fat tire biking in Anisra just raised the awareness and brought more people to the park. So, um, let's see, uh, what ensued, like I said, was a greater awareness that the trails at Hinisra were a nice place to get physically active while riding and also a fun experience for bike users. Um, let's see, uh, generally, uh, we defined if you've ever been at Hinisra, uh, the trails are kind of natural trails. They're not paved. Uh, they are through the woods. We do have a, a circular kind of uh, area in the middle of the park that is uh, crusher dust. You know, it's 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 a wider area where people you know tend to walk. And it's kind of looks like a, a track, a natural track, but with crusher dust there. Um, but outside of the winter months, when trails are groomed for cross country skiing, the trails at Hennessy are always multi-use natural trails. 
So that led us up to um, November 18th when we brought it back to park committee with winter right around the corner. We wanted to get prepared for what the intent uh, was going to be this year. And again, uh, consideration with possible action on the use of fat tire bikes at Inesser Park was put on the agenda. And the motion at that time, which came out of the meeting, uh, was to refer to staff to work with the neighborhood, stakeholders, and fat tire bikers, and report back to the first at the first parks committee meeting in January for discussion with possible action on the use of fat tire bikes at Hinesra. So with Thanksgiving uh, being the week after, they didn't hold a council meeting. So this is officially approved for action on December 1st, and which we uh, at, at that time got started right away with trying to designate trails, create updated signage, update the map, raise public awareness, uh, and get the word out on what the trial basis would be until this January 13th Parks Committee meeting. So attached in your path dated map uh, that is currently being implemented on a trial basis. Uh, we also worked with our parks and forestry staff to uh, reroute some trails and create some opportunities for the user groups to be separate from each other as much as feasible uh, within the footprint. Uh, and then we, so we established new routes for the trails, signage, and all, we also worked with our, our staff to provide public awareness and education for our trails. Uh, we sent out postcards uh, to invite residents surrounding the park with the updated map and also the invite to the public input meeting, which we also put on Facebook and our website. And we put a press release out, which I said, uh, you know, we had 60 to 70 people attend that meeting. We also had some media there, uh, which did a story on it. Uh, we put out a survey on December 30th, which ran up through today. Uh, like I said, we received over 275 responses and over uh, 65 pages of comments. I do have some general observations from the survey, if, if anybody has questions on that, but I'm not going to run through the entire survey, of course. It's, it's pretty, uh, there's a lot of comments in there. Uh, like I said, we did as much public outreach as possible through social media, website, the bike groups, the cross-country ski groups, and the community and the, uh, you know, residents and also the overall community. And I will say, uh, I know Alder Burnett can probably uh, uh, also confirm this, but I've received more phone calls and communications than I'm honestly, I think, ever experienced uh, in my time with the city, uh, except for maybe Colburn Pool. Uh, but, you know, that's a separate uh, subject. But I've been in touch with the uh, Alder Persons, the Neighborhood Association president that's near that area, and also many residents and community members on this subject. Uh, we've identified areas where safety was a concern. We addressed trail etiquette. We started the trail condition update section on our website, and we, and we rebuilt some areas throughout the last month to improve the trail user's experience. So once again, we come to the committee after thoroughly attempting as best we can on a trial basis to designate walker, hiker, cross-country ski, and fat tire bike trails at Hennesser Park so each user group could safely and respectfully enjoy the Jumbo Park that we have here on the west side of Green Bay to recreate, get physically active, and be within nature right here in our city. So at this point, uh, the wheel is in your court. All right, uh, anything from any of the alders right now or should we open the floor? Motion to open the floor. Second. But can we please um, limit the yeah. length of conversation? Yeah. Is, is uh, Shelby here to work the timer, James? Uh, yeah, Cor Corey is here uh, yeah. to help work the timer. Okay. Corey, I don't know. We can either do it manually or, Corey, do you know how to put that up on the screen if you need it? Well, that way uh, people speaking can see. Um, uh, first Chairman. of all, a motion by Alder. Oh, go ahead, Alder Burnett. Uh, Chairman, um, I understand that I desire to limit the uh, speech to um, fit, you know, time wise, but uh, what is your recommendation for the amount of time people can speak? Uh, Three minutes. Yeah, you, know, uh, you know, I would, uh, you know, it's a vote. It's your, your prerogative as chair. Is that correct? I, I think we can, I think we can determine that as a committee. I'm open. Yeah. To I mean, quite frankly, I believe that there is going to be more people speaking. It looks like there are 40 people here. I'm a little against, I'm, well, I'm very much against limiting this discussion for the reason that a lot of the neighbors already feel they were not properly notified by the park department. So we now then limit their ability. A lot of the emails that I received were very good, very on point, but they're long. Like a lot of people have a lot to say. And so I don't want to limit them. In, you know, as chairman, I think you could redirect them if they're, you know, rambling or going off on tangents. You, you know, I, I doubt that that would happen. 
So again, I don't know if that's your prerogative as chair. I would just, I would encourage you to let people speak freely unless they start, you know, being redundant. Well, um, the, the, it's not just, but we want to get everybody in. And, and I, I understand. I think I want, minutes, you should be able to get quite a bit in and, and realize, I think everyone should realize we've all done our homework. We've read the emails. We've, we've, you know, listened to the conversations on the phone. So I think, I don't know that we're really going to get much new information. Uh, so in three minutes, you should be able to vent yourself and, and get your point across, I think. Uh, just as I, I'd like to kind of keep it orderly and keep it moving because we have so many. Yeah. And you're the chair and you've always done a good job. I just wanted my opinion on. That's all. Okay. Uh, unless anybody else has anything else, how, how about we go with three minutes? And can I just say who who seconded the opening the floor? I didn't catch that. No, Burnett. Alder Burnett uh, made the motion. Alder Gerlach seconded, it, and we need to vote. <coughs> so, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Uh, uh, James, did you want to? Can you see? So, the yeah, the first uh, person listed is Kurt. And I'm not going to attempt to say the last name. Shui uh, Sao. Sorry, Kurt, if I said that wrong. But Perfect. Yeah, that's not bad. You just state your name and address for the uh, committee, and you've got three minutes. If we can get the timer up, Corey, so they have a feel. Thank you. Starting gun. All right. Am I still on? <coughs> sorry about that. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes, yes, please. Go. Okay, great. The, um, oh, I see. I'm just looking at the timer. Well, I just wanted to say my name's Kurt Suizo, uh, 142 North Broadway. I'm the owner of Pete's Garage. <clears throat> and I wanted to say thanks to everyone for all the work that's been put into these trails. And I really appreciate the, uh, the history earlier of the trail system, um, particularly the, the parts describing all the work and the thought that's been put into trail usage. Um, I've been riding these trails. I'm a mountain biker. Obviously, I'm in favor of keeping the trails open to mountain bikes and opening them to fat bikes. I've been riding these trails for the last 30 years or so. Um, and it's a small trail system, uh, but it's a very nice trail system. And I think it augments the other trails in town very well. Um, I look at any opportunity to encourage people to get outside and stay active as positive. Uh, I think a lot of the concern about <clears throat> trail usage with fat bikes in particular, it comes down to really sharing the trails and making sure that we have positive interactions between trail users. So I think just the, the general rules of trail etiquette uh, really come into play and need to be reinforced and remembered by everyone, which is that uh, cyclists generally <clears throat> yield to pedestrians um, and you know that we keep our speed in check and are courteous and smile and wave and all those things. Um, but I, again, I appreciate the efforts. Uh, I think it's really great to see the trails come along. I know the small amount of work that's been put into the trails over the past year has really improved them to the point where it's going to limit erosion. It's going to create a more established route for riders, hikers to use. It's going to discourage uh, just kind of <clears throat> freedom to bushwhack and create new trails here and there that might not be so healthy for the park. Uh, so overall, I think uh, we're going to see a real uh, positive movement, maybe a little heavier use of the trails, but more awareness of this park that uh, kind of drops off every, everyone's radar in Green Bay. Uh, so thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah. Um, next up, I have Mike Stone. All right, uh, my name is Mike Stone. I assume, can everybody hear me? Yes. All right, good. I, I live at 1968 Evans Drive. That's in the neighborhood. I'm a couple blocks away from Hinistra Park. I'm a lover of Hinistra Park. I I go there about three times a week. I walk it uh, in the summer and I ski it in the wintertime. And I am a, both a, a skier and a bicyclist. Uh, but my concern from what I've seen so far is that if we have fat tire bikes at Hinistra, we won't have skiing because uh, despite the efforts of, of uh, having multi-use, uh, we just have bikers that don't pay any attention to where they're supposed to go. So 
I, I would say that the easy solution is, a very easy solution, is that in the wintertime, that Henderson Park is a ski park, and in the summertime, it's a bicycling park. And that way it's multi-use and we get the most out of it. But uh, again, my concern is that if we have uh, Henderson, if we allow fat tire bikes, which I've seen people going through, once they ride over the ski trails, it's no longer a ski trail, it becomes a bike trail. So I would like to see as a neighbor uh, of Hanister and as a person that's been skiing and, and enjoying Hanister for 20 years, I'd like to see skiing in the winter and, and bicycling in the summer. And that's it. Well, within my, my three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, next up, I would have Rachel Hernandez. Hi, good evening, Rachel Hernandez, 1296 Delsman Street. I talk fast, so I will come in well underneath the three minute mark. I also emailed um, some initial thoughts over to the older people as well, so I will keep this very brief. Um, again, Rachel Hernandez, I am a fat tire biker. I am also a trail runner at Hinisra, and I love to bring my kids to the park and hike there in the summer, spring, and fall as well. I also run a Facebook group of oh, about 200 fat biking women in the state of Wisconsin, about 30 of whom are in the Green Bay area. Uh, we and I specifically love Hinisra because unlike some of the other fat tire biking uh, courses, this one has hills, it's natural, which is kind of unlike some of the golf courses that are there. And it is a physical challenge um, biking up and biking that big machine up some of those hills. When I attended the meeting in person at Hinisra Park a few weeks back, the feedback I heard from the non-biking community was really around safety and wanting to make sure that expectations were clear for really everyone who was using the park. So um, I believe Mike mentioned there were bikes on the, on the uh, cross-country ski trails. That does not surprise me. I'm sure there's also hikers and walkers who are using that trail who should not. I think one of the challenges with having the trial basis at Hinisra um, is that the signage was really, you know, put into to, for the trial basis and not really installed on a permanent basis, which I think leaves some opportunities for further education and setting expectations of all users, all users of the trail, um, which Kurt also chatted about a little bit when he was talking as well. Um, but my my goal and I think what we can do to move forward in a way that meets the needs of, of most users of the park is to move the fat tire biking to a permanent basis on the orange loop where it is today. The one safety concern I will call out as a biker is there are some areas where the orange trail, the fat bike trail crosses some of the walking or skiing trails um, and it's on a downhill slope and that can get a little bit tricky. So having some really clear signage for both bicyclists and pedestrians at those intersections, I think will do a lot to help promote safety as well. Thank you. Uh, next, James. Uh, Natalie Bomstead. Hello, everyone. Natalie Bomstead, um, 239 Seminole Lane. Um, so I come to you as both a resident of Green Bay and I also wear a, a different hat as the executive director of Wello. We are a nonprofit located within the greater Green Bay community that promotes um, health and well being. Um, so come to you with both of those hats. Uh, we are in support uh, of the continued inclusion uh, of these fat bike trails um, at Hinas Rope Park. Really want to applaud the efforts here, both uh, of our older, uh, our elders as well as our staff, really on the foresight for offering this trail. Uh, one of the big things that we've um, really been hearing, and it was a little bit mentioned um, around the pandemic, more people are out and biking and walking than ever before, which is a really great thing. Um, I think the inclusion of this fat bike uh, trail is just another uh, you know, component, another puzzle piece of giving people another opportunity to take their families out and be active. You know, Wella also did a survey back in 2019 and we asked people what was the one thing that they would look to um, do within the community to improve well-being. And the addition of bike and walking trails was one of the number one comments that we received from the community. So we know that there's this community will there. That myself, I think what I really appreciate about the inclusion is um, what was talked about. You know, it, we have some of these facilities on the east side. This now allows for us to also have this on the west side. So we have these kind of facilities equitably dispersed within the community. Um, 
I love that the, bar, the, the park can now accommodate many different users. This really, I feel like, creates this great sense of community. Um, we can all be out and be active. If a family, someone wants to bike, someone wants to ski, someone wants to walk, we can all do that together here. Um, I do think that some of the things um, in terms of potential barriers um, you know, can be overcome. And I know that um, just seeing the amount of, of feedback and people who are coming together around this issue, that we have the community will to overcome those. So um, again, I, we really would love to see the continued inclusion here and, and really applaud the efforts of, of bringing this trail um, to the community. So thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, we will have Matt Berg. Thanks, James. Matt Berg, 3090 Sandia Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I want to say as a multi-trail user of Unestra Park, I am extremely pleased with how well this trial has gone. I feel that the cycling community, the running community, the hikers have all been extremely pleasant to each other when on the trails. Uh, we saw a little bit of excitement at the meeting uh, at, at the end of December, but overall, I think it was fantastic. Um, I had the opportunity to ride at the park a couple of times since the trial started in early December. And I have to say that I've only ever run across just a handful of multi-users while I'm out there. Um, the second point I wanna make is that I was talking with some business leaders in the area, and one of the things they mentioned was that having these parks with the hiking and biking trails as a representative from the Wellos just stated is a draw for employees and new staff members relocating to the community. If you look outside of Green Bay to other major cities, some very small cities such as Marquette, Michigan or the Cunha Lakes area in Minnesota, cycling has revived communities that have become um, desolate and it draws people to those areas for generating business revenue and people living and commuting into those areas. I think just having this additional resource as an opportunity for cyclists year round at Hinesha Park is a fantastic way to promote the city as a place to live and a place to grow. Thank you much. Thank you. Next, James. Uh, next up. Uh, Jamie uh, Kasevsky. Kasevsky. <laughs> hard one, probably a hard one to pronounce. Nobody can work at work can pronounce it either. That's fine. Um, yeah, so I've kind of been involved with this. Uh, uh, please, your name and address, quick. Uh, Jamie Kasevsky, two seven seven two Oakwood Drive. Um, I don't think the timer restarted, but um, that's fine. We'll yeah, so I was saying I, I, I've been involved with this kind of right off the bat. Um, like I said, I live two houses down from the park, so I'm pretty active as far as utilizing the park on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I guess I'm just kind of stemming from James's comment and, you know, the history of Hinezra and kind of it being such an old park. Um, to stem from that, you know, it is a park that's been utilized by this neighborhood and people within this neighborhood for how many years um, and the purpose, the sole purpose of it for how many years has been, you know, the purpose of skiing, hiking, walking, running, that sort of thing. And now all of a sudden you've introduced this new sport into a park that, you know, frankly is right in dead center of a massive amount of people <laughs> that use this park every day. Um, and I guess some of the frustration just stems from um, the lack of communication. I mean, I know we said this trial started last February, but we just sent out flyers three weeks ago, right before Christmas, for people to even know what's going on. And from the people that I've talked to personally, myself and many others, um, they had no idea where to start or who to talk to or who to call um, when they started seeing, again, the frustration isn't this, you know, the single bikers that you run into here and there. And most of them, again, are very friendly people, but now you get groups and bikers and you got people that are walking out there on these trails and you're moving out of the way every 10 minutes when they're doing a lap around the park. I mean, it's a 1.8 mile loop or two miles, whatever it is, versus a Baird's Creek and a reforestation camp being nine miles where there's a lot more room for people to disperse and, and utilize the trail systems. Um, again, I guess from my perspective, it just seems that 
you know, A, the lack of communication, and now we have three weeks for people to make a decision on how they feel about it within the community. And you're taking a park that again is in the middle of, you know, older neighborhoods, newer neighborhoods. Um, and then again, changing something that's been this way for how many years? And I know we've talked about the safety aspect and all those sort of things. I mean, I've kind of beat the bush on that one as well. Well, but point I feel like the park is is too small to accommodate all parties and to do it safely and effectively as well and sustain that. That's kind of all I have. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> more? Uh, Next looks like we have Heather Gentry. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Heather Gentry, 249 County Street, Green Bay. Um, I am the director of the Green Bay Bicycle Collective, and our mission is to educate and advocate for cyclists as well as pedestrians, because at the end of the day, cyclists, 99.9% .9 of us are pedestrians. Um, I guess I just kind of want to reiterate something James said in that um, bikes have always been allowed at Hinesra. Uh, neighbors just apparently weren't aware of it because maybe it wasn't so popular. Um, cycling has become so much more popular with with COVID, admittedly. Um, bike sales have gone through the roof and you couldn't find any bikes to save your life. Um, but this is a public park. It's not just a park for the neighbors of Hinesra. It is avail It should be available to the entire city. It's within the city limits. It is a city park. And to deter children in the neighborhood from utilizing that source is, is I feel, unfortunate. Um, at the public safety or at the public meeting a uh, week ago, two weeks ago, uh, people were just, they were so concerned about safety. I asked uh, several employees in the parks department if there have ever been any um, instances, any collisions of, of hikers and cyclists, and there are none. Um, Many of us cyclists, we like to try out different areas, different trails and parks all over the place um, within Wisconsin and all over the Midwest. And there's so many wonderful, wonderful places, including around here. Uh, and hikers and cyclists use those parks without incident. And it is a big draw to have um, a resource like this in the area. Um, I guess. My biggest concern is that when you start talking about dividing up spaces and usage and, and excluding a certain group of people either out of fear or mistrust or maybe even just misinformation, uh, we're not doing our job. Cyclists have a very good um, understanding of the, the hierarchy of safety. If you look at the Fox River Trail, uh, it's, the mo it's the most popular trail in the state and you have cyclists and hikers on there all the time without, without incident. Um, I guess finally, the parks department, you know, especially, you know, since, since James has been in the, uh, leading the parks department, they have done a fantastic job um, taking care of these resources, doing their work, looking for safety hazards. And I, I feel like they've done a good job with this as well looking at the different options that are out there. So I, I don't know, I think we should just continue to let them do their job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we'll have Jason Salzweddell. Yes, uh, this is Jason Salzweddell, 3100 North Gothic Circle, Green Bay. Um, obviously close to the park, uh, live just a mile away. Uh, really have been very engaged in that park over the last couple of years. I also lead a local Boy Scout troop and a couple of our scouts have really got engaged to help improve uh, some of the, the park's um, attributes, if you will, um, installing some signs to help get people around, both helping out the people who hike the trail as well as walk it. Um, as, and then also recently uh, installing a boardwalk in the uh, marshy area in the uh, southeast corner, if 
if you will, of the park. You just make it more usable for everybody. So um, definitely um, a great resource having the park right there for all the neighborhoods uh, in the area. Uh, I do see that it can be a very good resource for both uh, bikers and hikers. I think they can live together. Uh, the separation of the trail that was done recently, I think is a, is a fabulous change. And, um, you know, we've seen less probably interactions on the trails since that's happened. I know there's, uh, you know, there's still some concerns about bikers biking on the non bike trail. I think as we get more snow and that gets groomed in, it will become much easier uh, to contain the bikers onto the trail. It'll be hard for them not to stay on the trail. Um, I think there's some education that needs to happen there as well, and probably some additional signage. Um, somebody mentioned, I think, on the downhill, you know, if we put up a bigger sign that says, I know there's a little one that says yield. I think, you know, as a biker, we probably need something a little bit bigger just to make sure that everybody's aware there's a trail crossing coming up. And that will, will definitely um, allow for a better interaction. But um, no, I think overall, we can live together out there. I think it just takes both parties being amiable to each other. Um, the separation will definitely help. And, you know, snowshoeing, walking, biking on the, the bike trail in the winter time, it's gonna be a lot better than people biking on the ski trail. The skiers are definitely not gonna want people walking or snowshoeing on the ski trail. So there kind of needs to be a separation just because those people are gonna continue to use the park uh, throughout the winter as well, so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, got Travis, or I mean, sorry, Thomas Wilbur. I think Mr. Wilbur has to unmute. Uh, yes, please unmute your. Oh, oh, that's good. Okay, very good. Sorry about that. Tom Wilbur, 2738 Oakwood Drive, Green Bay. I live about seven houses down from um, from the park, and I um, I wrote an email to the Parks Department, so many of you have probably seen that or as part of your packet. I would be curious to see what uh, James had for his results from his surveying, and I hope uh, at least if we don't get a chance to see that, that the uh, the committee does, so the council. Um, you know, for my money, um, I live seven ounces down. I never received a flyer about the upcoming uh, a pilot program. And so for many of us from the community here, we feel like this has been forced on us. And it was something that we were kind of un unprepared to, to, uh, to look at or to, to incorporate in our community. And while this is a public park, and I mentioned that in my email, that all taxpayers deserve um, to use or to have access, sometimes trying to lump them all together doesn't make sense. This park was was built 60 some years ago under the guise of multi-use and for, and for many people, and for multi-use over the years as the definition that has changed. And back then multi-use probably didn't include fat tire bikes and it probably didn't include drones. But today, you find all these things coming into play for people that are interested in being in the outdoors. Um, and so I think the definition has changed and it's a, a little bit um, unrealistic for us to try to cram too much into a limited space. I think the other thing that people are concerned about in our neighborhood is the nature of this park. You know, we all know, if you live here, that there's a fox's den up there this year. And everybody was, was um, marveled at the wonder of that fox's den and the pups coming in and out of that den and running around that park. And we just hate to see that type of thing destroyed by, by uh, um, a group of fat tire bikers that have, from our perspective, invaded the park. The last thing I would say is this. Uh, while everybody has some good points about uh, what a park does for bringing um, you know, something to the community, I think it's a stretch to say that or to incur that if you juxtapose the um, uh, the, the park into economic development. 
Um, I don't think there's much economic development that's going to come to our neighborhood from that park being open to, uh, other than what it's been used for until now. And so, again, I go back to the fact that, you know, it's a nature park. It's been very quiet and peaceful for our neighborhood. And for, for many of us, including myself, we'd like to keep it that way. Thank you. I do have a question. For who? Me? For you, yes. Please. Yeah. Uh, Wilbur, yeah. Um, you said quiet and peaceful. Do, do the bikers make a lot of noise? Can you can you hear them in the neighborhood? Um, quiet and peaceful doesn't necessarily mean noise. It, it, it okay. can mean maybe 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 peaceful is a better phrase. Um, um, no, they're not making noise as far as you know. It's just that there's, there's commotion in the park now. Enough commotion, I know, it would drive out any future fox dance. Okay, thank you. That's I, I just want to understand what you're getting at. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Julie Thielen. Can you can you hear me? I can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> I um I also sent an email to all the um, city council members, so you would have gotten that from me. So I won't repeat anything. Hey, but the only thing I'm I'm just responding to the comments that um okay, but please start with your name and address please quickly. Oh Julie Thielen, eighteen sixty one St. Agnes Drive. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um I'm just responding to the comments just quickly that Heather made, um, the one that has the bicycle group. Um she stated that um no one's gotten hurt, which thank God I'm glad to hear that, that no one has and I hope no one ever does. Um, but she made a reference to the Fox River Trail that no one's gotten hurt and everyone's coexisted. And I just wanted to point out that the difference being is that the Fox River Trail is five or six feet wide. There's plenty of room to pass someone on those trails. So the, the Hinesma Trail is two feet wide, maybe three feet wide in some spots. So someone has to get out of the way to accommodate the other person. So, and the bicyclists, it's hilly there, and I don't know what speed they're coming down. It seems like 50, but it's probably 10. But they're coming down at a high rate of speed down those hills. So it's very unfair to compare Hennister Park to the Fox River Trails and that no one's getting hurt. So that's all I, all I had to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up, James. Thank you, Julie. Um, I, I I don't see else in the chat box currently. Does anybody else want to speak on this item? I believe I, I see Kathy Amundsen. I think she's trying to figure out how to unmute her computer. Okay. Um, maybe could walk. There she is, Kathy. We 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 can hear you now. Okay. Thank you very much. I've been in the neighborhood for thirty-seven years. Everybody's always gotten a very small part being a regional destination. The, the paths are narrow, like the other lady just said, one feet to two feet. Who's going to go jump in the mud? Are the bikers going to run off into the mud, or are we going to jump into the mud? There is a fox den, which has been brought up. And the trail is right next to the fox den. <clears throat> I mean, the you can take a picture, and here's the den, and here's the fat tiger bikers. Why that wasn't taken in consideration when the park, the trails were being trially done. I want to know if it's such a trial, why is there a building on the premises of the park with the groomer in it that doesn't seem like a trial to me. That sounds like a done deal. Um, I, I've been in that park, like I said, many years, and we've always all got along. There's, I don't, I don't know how you're going to put like 40 bikes if 40 bikes decide to come into a small area and very small paths. I, I'm sure it's great to ride your bikes through there. It's just. 
to me, it's just not safe. It's not safe for the environment. It's not safe for people. It's not certainly safe for the animals. I can send you pictures. That's, I guess that's all I have to say. I probably have to say more, but that's fine. But you still have another minute and a half, but you can- I know, but you, everybody has heard everything okay. many of times and to repeat it just doesn't really do any good. But Fox River Trail, it is, it's six feet wide. You say bike on the left, they go on the left. You say bike on the left in the woods, where are you gonna go? There's no place to go or bike on the right, whatever it happens to be. There is no place to go. And for regional, it's too small of a park. It's just way too small. Barrett's Creek is bigger. The wild, I mean, all the other parks are bigger. You've got this tiny little park. So I just am trying to save our tiny little park. And try to get along with everybody. Thank you. Just please state your address then. Oh, uh, Kathy Amundsen at 1973 Mulberry Lane. And I did not know anything about this until Christmas Eve day is when I finally got a flyer. Okay, so thank you. Anyone else care to speak on this? Yeah, I think we just uh, had another, oh, um, was that Mary Mary Kay? Oh, yeah, or Mike, I, I, I said I put a message there, may oh. I speak? Well, we have, um, we do have a couple, we have Mary Kay Vandy. Hi. We, so we'll go Mary Kay Vandalee and then Carolina and then we'll go back to you, Mike. Does that sound good? Yes, that's fine. Okay, Mary Kay, please state your name and address. Hi, my name is Mary Kay Vandalot. I live at 601 Green Avenue. I'm born and raised in Green Bay, lived here all my life. Um, I just wanted to say, number one, that I am in support of the bike trail. I think it's very important that we have safe um, places to ride, to ride our bikes. And then I just wanted to speak to the references that have been made to the, the width of the trail. Um, Fox River Trail was brought up, Baird's Creek was brought up. Um, Fox River Trail is very wide, um, but Baird's Creek, very narrow trail. And I hike there, I bike there for years and years, um, and people get along and they coexist fine. And when a bike comes and you have to move out of the way, there, there are places to go. Um, and Baird's Creek is very narrow. So, and also um, I'd like to, to reiterate the point that this trail, this this bike path and the whole park, it's for everyone, not just the people who live in the neighborhood. And I think that's really important, um, a very important point. So that's it for me, thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Mary Kay. Now uh, we have Car Carolina. Hello, uh, my name is Carolina Filon, 2906 Prairie View Court. Um, I guess I would like to know what are the results of the um, survey. I, I've taken on to myself to talk to people who don't belong to any groups, people who are just randomly individually come to the park um, to ski. Um, I, I didn't get many signatures in this winter, but um, who walk, who run. And I have collected 50 signatures of people who would like to keep the park as it is, who are simply overwhelmed by traffic, numbers. And um, I guess when we're talking about safety, um, it is a factor that the previous speaker just said that the, he comes a bike and there's somewhere to go. So I think it just totally violated what we were talking about, the etiquette of who has the right of way, who is traveling at higher speed. Um, and I would like to be, um, I, I would like to know what do you want me to do with the signatures of people who voiced their opinion? Um, I felt like the survey was a bit biased in a way that it was just asking, do you want bikes on separate trails or bikes on the same trail? 
scale, but it's like, do we really want to change the designation? I understand that um, bikes are not forbidden and we cannot really disallow anyone from coming from here. But I think what we're trying to oppose is organized, big team, 65 people on New Year's Day usage that is interfering with how this park was utilized for years and then what it's doing to the nature and um, environment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Then Mr. Stone yeah. again, correct? We have uh, Mike Stone and then we'll have Kate Whitman next. Okay. All right, good, thanks. Well, I, I would like to say that I do live in the neighborhood. I do visit the park at least once a week and I, I didn't hear about any of the surveys so it, the survey might be a bit incomplete. Uh, I, I just happened to stumble upon this on Facebook just by chance. So, um, you know, you might not be getting the full voice. I don't have any clue what the results were. But I'm surprised that I didn't know about it. Um, but I would like to voice my concern again that, uh, you know, I, I do. I, I'm a bicyclist. I'm a skier. I'm a walker. I use the park all the time. I just don't see having bikes going through that small park I, I think it's going to get torn up abused and the ski trails they, they won't be multiple multi-use once the skiers or once the bikers right over that ski trail one time is done and it'll be like you know for the whole year so you know there's so many other places to bicycle i myself am a bicyclist i just i'd like to see him not be in Hinistra. it's just not the place for him and that's my opinion okay thank you and I think uh, when we're all done here, James, you have the uh, the uh, data. We could just, if you could share on your screen, maybe the pie chart and bar chart of the survey. Yep, we can do that. And I can go over, like I said, general comments on it or any specific areas that you want me to, you know, reference. Okay, but let's finish up with the floor first. Sure. Um, next, we have Kate Whitman. Hi, my name is Kate Whitman. I live at 112 West Florida Avenue in Little Chute, Wisconsin. I realize that is not part of the Brown County system, but I did grow up in Brown County and just a stone's throw from the park. Uh, my family has been frequenting that park over the gosh, over 30 years now. And we have watched a lot of different environmental changes happen to the, to that park, such as, you know, the residential buildup around the park. And we, we saw populations of um, plants and animals go on to the decline. This park, as many people have cited um, throughout this call, it's a small park. And I really under, I understand that there's a thrill as far as with bicycling within that park, but adding additional trails to an already sm small park park where it's crisscrossing everywhere is going where where are you going to find the the wildlife the plants that thrive the 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 various plants that you know indian pipe that grows in there you have so many different types of, of plants and animals that we have tracked all throughout the years that are now being impacted um, by the the increase of, of trail not necessarily increase of trail use but the increase of volume of trails as those networks are now going through and impacting there's a uh, uh, extension that we're seeing within the trails that create uh, unsafe trip hazards, which I understand that the park does go through and, and try to groom and mitigate, but um, the impact of those trails is tearing up mud and is creating erosion that that is going to take years and years and years of, re of reversing if that is at all possible. Um, I am not a resident of Brown County. I, I grew up in Brown County, but I still frequent this park. So the idea of this is being limited to only the residents that are around the park, I, I think is just an, an absurd argument. It is a park, I believe, that everyone can share and use and enjoy the beauty of it. Um, I, I really appreciate your time and your, your consideration in this, but please understand that it is not just the, the safety that we're talking about here, it's also about that that impact at the top of the meeting that tonight you cited that the population of birds uh, and that the city of Green Bay is now going to be named the, the one of the top bird cities. Well, where do those birds migrate? Where do they live? Where is their food source? It is in parks like Hinistra State or Hinistra Park that those birds migrate through. So please, with careful consideration, consider what the um, ecosystem impact of 
continuing to build additional trails in a very small park and what's that going to do and as far as long-term enjoyment for anyone if there isn't a park because we have created so many trails and we're basically paving a lot through it then it's not really going to be much of a use for anyone thank you okay thank you okay that it james uh that's everybody that i have on the chat box does anybody else care to speak on the subject I'll take a motion to close the floor. I move that we close the floor. Yep. Second. A motion by Alder Gallock, seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> closed. Okay, the floor is now closed. James, why don't you just, uh, before we get into discussion, why don't we just get up some more data with the, the pie chart and the bar chart and just give a quick, quick run through <laughs> on the survey and then. Uh, We'll save the rest for if there's any further questions on it. Sounds good. Um, Corey, are you able to pull that up? There we go. How do I like this? So let's see. Do I have it? Can I do this too? Oh. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> I don't know how to let them. Can you just scroll down, Corey? And I think something was stuck here. Yep, we're working on it. Should be just a moment. Try again. All right, so as we go through here, how we put the survey out is because we want to try to try to find a way to establish how people were using the park and also how important those use in the park. So as you look at the survey results here, you're going to see um, this is as of, you know, this is 263 responses. We did get another additional about dozen responses uh, after the weekend, uh, but we needed time to compile this and also talk with everybody. And I needed time to share this with the aldermen in the park uh, or the older people and the uh, you know, park committee so they could have time to go through it because it was a lot of information. So there were another 12 responses just to be uh, transparent. But as you can see here, uh, first one, you know, how important it is uh, for you to see the following activities at Hennister Park. And we broke that into walking, hiking, uh, biking, and also cross-country skiing. So uh, these are uh, five would be, you know, very important uh, to have these activities within Henderson Park, and one would be not. I don't. I don't care. Um, I don't even. I don't think it should even be there practically. So, and then two, three, and four is is in between. So, you you look at this. Um, you know, almost sixty percent of the respondents said that the, the hiking and walking is very important to them at Henderson Park. So, if you go down to the next one. Uh, this would be biking. So out of the respondents, you have um, almost 68% uh, that said biking was very important uh, for them uh, at Hinnestra Park. And, you know, you see the other side of it where, you know, 36 respondents said, you know, essentially they were saying absolutely not. Uh, but, and then you have some in between. And then we have, if we go down, uh, trail running, you see a little more of a diversity there, but you see it's still almost 50% saying trail running is very important. Um, and then you have kind of in the middle, you, you kept quite a bit of disparity there throughout, but only 38 people said no. A majority of people here are still saying uh, trail running is important to them. If we go down skiing, uh, this this one was a little more uh, interesting. Uh, when I took a look at it, you have, you know, 29%, if you round up, uh, people that say, yes, uh, definitely want skiing. And then on the other side, you have 25% that essentially are saying there's no need for skiing here. Um, and then you have, of course, in the middle, you have a good, uh, trend, you know, disparity of people here in the middle, kind of just either a two or three or a four. Uh, but you can see skiing was the one that 
you know, probably, I guess, surprised me the most, um, you know, with and not as large a group saying that they wanted skiing there. Uh, snowshoeing, uh, similar to skiing, I would say, but uh, a little bit higher on the, you know, one, uh, 35% saying yes, five, you know, absolutely, and uh, down to 14% um, or 15% that said, you know, kind of just not a, a big uh, consideration for them. And then we just uh, kind of said, you know, honestly, with these surveys, they're, they're really tough, to be honest, when you put a survey out to try to make it as, uh, you know, open and not trying to, you know, uh, have any kind of, uh, you know, intent on how you do the surveys, but we just asked some yes or no questions. Um, you know, do you participate in the following activities at Hennister Park? So do you participate in walking and hiking? Yes or no? 71% uh, said yes, 29% said no. And then with biking, we had 72% say yes and 28% say no. Uh, trail running, uh, we had 38% say yes and uh, about 62% say no. Skiing, 73% uh, of people responded no and 27% responded yes. Uh, snowshoeing, um, eh, fairly similar, a little bit higher, but you know, 39% said yes and 62% uh, said no. And then these are, uh, this was the, I, I think this is one of my, uh, for me, as a, a park, I'll call myself a park guy, uh, pretty passionate about parks, but this is what, this thing really gave you a, a great kind of overall view of how people utilize the park, which I thought was really neat because we just said how, what other ways do you enjoy using this park? And as you can see, there's just so many uses and, and ways that people use Hanistra Park. It, it's really neat to see from an overall standpoint. It might not help this discussion maybe uh, too much, maybe it does, but here's some uh, examples, you know, dog walking, bird watching, geocaching, uh, sledding on the big hills near St. Elizabeth. Uh, they participate in the trail maintenance. We have a lot of volunteer groups that help with trail maintenance, trail work, park cleanup, um, also invasive species removal, uh, uh, plant identification, watching the foxes in the spring, nature photography, uh, I like this one, me meandering. I think that's a word that we don't use enough in our parks. I like that. Uh, I like to look at nature and relax, uh, enjoy the wildlife, uh, doing Pokemon Go, uh, doing cleanups, uh, using it as an outdoor classroom, which we do have both King uh, Elementary and Lombardi Middle School. Uh, I did want to mention that do utilize the park for some of the outdoor classroom and environmental education that they do. Uh, they also use it uh, during the summer for some cross-country a middle school trail meets uh, at times and things like that. So uh, we do have that uh, access to the schools uh, and the students as well. Uh, nature watching, walking with my friends, uh, I talked about some of the trail work park cleanup, summer and winter biking, uh, meditation in nature, which I strongly advocate for, uh, organizing uh, bike trails or bike rides, I mean, uh, just biking and some hiking, running on the school track next to the park. Um, I would love to downhill ski if that's at all possible and ice skating would be fun too. Uh, fat tire biking, uh, taking my grandchildren on nature walks, using the gravel trail around the bowl of the park, birding, uh, botanizing, uh, mushroom hunting, uh, playing, with, uh, playing with kids, sledding, hiding rocks, uh, just discovering the park this summer, uh, which is neat. And I did want to mention something in here also that's not listed. Uh, is this is one of the sites that we do uh, urban deer hunt in. So not many people know that, but as you're going through the trails, um, you know, you may be going right under somebody that's uh, deer hunting uh, in the park. Uh, we do have, this is one of the locations where we have uh, deer hunting allowed in our uh, citywide deer hunting program. So uh, there, were, there were some of the activities that uh, people to participate in the park. If you wanna go to the next slide, Corey, please. And then we asked some questions about just how safe people felt because that seemed to be one of the big uh, considerations at both our public input meeting and also some of the comments over the last month. But um, do you feel user-specific trails would create for a safer environment for users? Um, majority of people, 65% said yes and still 35 said no. Uh, 
Uh, we have do you feel user specific trails would make for a more enjoyable environment for users? Um, about almost 70% said yes and about 30% said no. And then would you prefer one trail system that is open to all park users? And this is essentially why we're here today, right? Because you are essentially seeing, you know, 57% uh, or 58% uh, that say no and 42% um, that say yes. So uh, this is the this is what brings us to this discussion, uh, essentially, is the fact that we have pretty much half and half of the people that say uh, one trail system open to all users would be good, and, and, some, and then half are saying, no, it wouldn't. Um, so that's the, that's the graphs uh, of the culmination of all the data. Uh, like I said, there was a lot of comments and some general um, you know, comments that seem to be repeated uh, in general overall with the, the comments, which I have 65 pages of. So. Mm -hmm. I'm more than willing to go over any of those uh, if you want or, or if you have any questions. Chairman, I have a question. If, oh. Go ahead, Alder Burnett. Uh, thank you, uh, James. Uh, question, did the uh, survey go out to bicyclist groups? Did, did the uh, Parks Department engage the different bicycle groups uh, to distribute the survey to their members? Um, I would say in general, yes. Um, you know, I mean, at, yeah, I mean, and, and that's, uh, you know, again, that's justified. I mean, we're going to explore the idea of having fat tire bikes at a park. It makes sense that you would engage that user group. I guess my question is, how many are you aware of, of the user groups were notified of the survey and perhaps posted the survey on social media? So, I mean, I'm aware of the ones that we are, I mean, it sounds silly, but I'm aware of the ones we're aware about. Um, we had, you know, there is a bike group out there that has a Facebook page. There's also a Friends of Hanistra Park that kind of saved the park. There's a page yep. uh, like that. Uh, there's also multiple groups like Wello, and there's other uh, that, you know, of course, found, you know, had the survey. We sent it out on our Facebook page. Uh, we sent it out also, um, you know, put it on our website. Uh, we tried to put it out to all the neighborhood associations. I communicated with, you know, King of Arms and, and the areas that, you know, the yep. neighborhood associations around there. And then through the, through any other channel that we could get the survey out to, we tried. So yep. yes, yeah, part of the communication was to uh, work with, you know, stakeholders and the bike user groups. So yeah, we tried to get the word out to everybody that we could. Yeah. And James on that, it, it, you did everything you should do. You know, yep. as the assistant park director, you're into recreation, you're trying to find multiple user purposes. I get all that. That's everything you should do. But the, the friends of Hinostra group is, you know, 30 or 40 people, people around the park were not you know, And this is not, I'm not blaming you. This is not, don't take this wrong. Like when I'm pointing my finger at you, but I'm just saying that I believe the survey is flawed. And the reason why it's flawed is if you look at the most typical use for that park from neighborhood people, from people who visit the park is walking, you know, historically it's walking. And if the survey results say 58.2% say that walking is their high, at number five, the highest rating, only, you know, 58% goes to walking and 67.7% .7 go to biking. That just goes to show that a lot of the bikers were the ones that did the survey. And right, right wrong, or indifferent, the, the reason I point that out is that the numbers are skewed. It's not, you're not to blame. The bikers aren't not to blame. I would do the same thing. If it'd be like, say if you're really into football for example and you want to start a youth football league and you have a little tiny park and you asked a bunch of you know football enthusiasts whose kids play football are you, are you okay with having football at this little tiny park marquette park a lot of the a lot of those people are going to take the survey and say yes mm -hmm. meanwhile a lot of the people that one may not be aware of it or may not be as organized aren't going to have the same rate of participation i point that out just because i think although the survey is good and it's certainly a tool i don't think it should be the overwhelming you know number uh, number one reason why we should make a long-term change to a park some of the bicyclist groups have over two thousand members like there's one group and again i'm just stating facts i'm not looking to stir up any trouble it's just a vision uh, we need to consider over 2,000 members of a you know bicycle group on Facebook, 
if some of their members, you know, took that survey and they maybe they don't live in the area, or maybe participate in the park maybe once a year or twice a year, or even once a month, that's going to skew the results in that favor. Whereas people who use the park every day who don't know about the survey. So I think there's a flawed process. And I'm not fingering you specifically, James. I think as a city council, we need to really look at that process going forward. It's come up at different times. It's come, just come up at Holborn Park. It's come up through our history. So it's a process flaw. And it is what it is, but those are my thoughts on the particular survey results. Thank you. Yeah, and just to, you know, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I'm not, you know, and I, I think, like you said, it is a, it's one of the tools um, that we used you know, in conjunction with, um, you know, the public input meeting, which we saw a great turnout for that. I think based on the comments I, I saw on the survey and also the comments that we heard at the public input meeting, as well as the emails and communications that at least I received throughout this process, I think it was very, in, in general, the same type of comments. I mean, I don't think there was anything that, you know, I heard, um, you know, overall that was like really skewed compared to what the survey said. Um, but once again, I, I, yeah, I think it's a tool as well. Any other uh, questions from the committee on the survey? Or James. Okay, go ahead. Just want to be clear, James. Um, so this survey was completely electronic. Yeah, uh, due to, I mean, we didn't have a lot of options with COVID, unfortunately. Okay, and I'm, I'm just asking, and so if people either found it or they didn't find it, it wasn't that there was a certain target audience that you said we must get their, their input. We put it out on our Facebook page and those groups that either have friended or tagged our Facebook page probably would have received it. Okay. Um, and we also put it on our website and we put press releases out, um, you know, but at, at that point, yeah, it would have been uh, more of the public input meetings, uh, knowing about the survey and just uh, a lot of what we do, like any business is word of mouth. That's our best form of advertisement. So um, that's, that's and, and, and I don't, I'm not being critical, but I do well, agree with Alder Brunette. I, I think that the process is flawed and I think that we should just move past it. I don't think that survey tells us very much, but we've heard a lot of good things tonight. Um, and when I say good, I mean, I, I kind of kept score here. And I believe we had like half the people were for and half the people were against, but it's all good stuff to hear. We had some good emails. And so I, I would not spend a lot of time worrying about the survey results. I mean, a, a man who lives right near the park didn't know anything about the survey. I would just say, let's put that aside and let's continue the conversation with other sources of information. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, and I, I would also mention, you know, like somebody, uh, I like, you know, put in the chat box, you know, I, I did just go over kind of the extremes. You know, I mean, if you really look at, Although some people may be saying hiking or walking isn't a five for them, they're saying it's a four or a three or a two. So it's still very important to them. Um, you, you know, I mean, that's why I didn't get into so much detail, but. Okay. Uh, anybody else has anything they care to say on this uh, issue? No further discussion. I think Alder Gerlach wants to say I, something. I have other things, to say, oh, but yeah. I was waiting for you gentlemen to say things. But I'll go ahead because this has been very interesting to me. I never heard of a fat tire bike till I got put on this committee last April. So this is all new to me. And um, you know, of course, that they did my homework, right? So I now know all about fat tire bikes. And um, I've never been. Um, but I'm looking at this map. I just want to, oh, and first of all, I want to say I'm so sorry I was late for the meeting. I, um, I got so excited about having some progress on East Town Mall that I lost track of time. Uh, so I want to just mention that um, the emails that we got, I read them all, and they were so calm and patient and reasonable. And the people who spoke tonight were that, were that way too. And I really, really appreciate that, that um, we don't have anybody calling names or, you know, putting the fear of God in anyone. It's been a good, it's been a good, reasonable conversation. Um, I, do re I do think, though, in fact, I know for sure, change is always hard. And 
yet without change, we don't have progress. So it's so hard when you've had, especially for people who live close to a park, who've always had it the same way for 20 years or 30 years. No idea. And it could be a very good idea, but it's change. And that's hard. I understand that. I look at this map of this park and it looks to me very, very crowded. So I had a good talk with James. I'll, I'll tell the rest of the committee. I had a good talk with James this afternoon about this and trying to better understand it. And um, I, as one of the speakers said, I agree. I'm very concerned when I see that these trails intersect. And I feel like this looks to me, at 55 acres sounds like a big park, but it looks to me like, you know, there's an awful lot going on in those 55 acres. And I appreciate what people say about the nature and we don't want to, you know, we don't want to get in the way of nature. And so there are so many good arguments in every direction. And I, yet I really do have, I have faith in, in our parks department and our, our parks professionals. I know that James is trained in this and he has like 12 or 13 years of experience beyond what I have in it. Cause I got none. And, um, I guess I'm so excited now about fat tire biking. I think it's a wonderful exercise and I'm so happy that people want to do it. And, and Alderman Burnett would like me to be quiet. Oh, no, no, I, no, no, that's, I'm just raising my hand like to be speaking next. You're, okay, you're, okay. okay. I, I will try to, I, I, am, I, am I talking too long? I'm sorry. No, you're fine, you're fine. Okay. Keep I'm almost done, I'm almost done. So. I'll give you 10 I, seconds then. <laughs> just kidding, go on, go on. That'll be nice to me. You know, I want to encourage people to do this. I've never done it, but somebody sent us a video clip and I watched it and it really looks like fun and it's good exercise. I do think the long-term solution is maybe to find a different site on the west side where there could be plenty of room for fat tire biking. But maybe right now, if James and his people feel that they can maybe tweak this a little bit, I would recommend we continue this trial. We certainly haven't had any snow to work with yet. And, and see if maybe the trails need to be rerouted or something. I don't know how realistic that is so that we can have a short-term solution, but I would urge the Parks Department to be looking for a long-term solution that's better than this, because I just think this is a great sport. Thank you for listening. Okay, uh, Alder Burnett and then Alder yes. Uh Thank you, um, Chairman. Now, I obviously am the Alderman for the area where Hinasra is located. Alder Gerlach, I agree with you. I'm enthusiastic about fat tire bikes. It's a growing recreation. The simple fact is that Hina's Raw is not the right location for it. I say that as an alderman in the district. I say that as a user of that park. I say that as someone who's been in numerous conversations with people who use that park regularly. This is not to say anything bad about the Fat Tire Bike Group at all. It's a growing recreation. It's a very good recreation. If anything, it points out to the fact that for this particular uh, sport, we do not have adequate properties in our Green Bay Park system that have been identified for that particular user group. These are good people. I've talked to a lot of them. I've followed their Facebook page. You have emailed me, and if I didn't uh, e uh, call some of you back, please know I, I didn't purposely neglect that. In fact, I think I might have left a voicemail or two. Uh, I think it's incumbent upon the city to find a location for the fat tire bike users that is appropriate. You look at this map, I mean, you can't, see, I mean, for those who are, it's, you can't see it, well, maybe you can. There's a lot of, um, you know, zigzags. And I know we like to say that the trail system works and that it's perfect, but the reality is it doesn't work. And I don't think any, there's, there's not enough signage in the world that could make this work, in my opinion. The trails are very narrow. Uh, when I go out there, uh, specifically in the summer months, even with mountain bikers, you know, they, they come, they approach at a rather safe speed. And again, not to fault them. That's their recreation. That's what they like to do. No problem at all for me as far as that recreation. But in that park, when you have a family or 
you know, small children, it, it is a hazard. And I'm not painting with a broad brush, all fat tire bikers or mountain bikers. Most are responsible, but the reality is there are some who go at a very high rate of speed and it is a safety hazard. I know right now we say you can use fat tire bikes and mountain bikes in the park. I agree. Right now, that's the case prior and to not and now, but people did not know that. Okay, so now we have the fat tire bike people who are going to be pushing these events and live streaming events on their Facebook pages. It's going to encourage participation. Not a bad thing for a park system, but a bad thing for a park system with this property that will not properly accommodate it. You have a family of four or five going for a leisurely walk on a trail, uh, and then you have you know, three or four mountain bikers or fat tire bikes, no problem. But what if you have 10? What if you have 20 for a group ride? That does create a, a hazard. There's a park issue there in that it's a beautiful natural park. The wildlife will flourish there again someday. And my district is unique because it, it, we don't have a lot of parks. And again, that, that points to the problem because in my district, west of Packerland, we have two city parks, Enosra and Ted Fritch Park. So you, you basically have people wanting to recreate but not having enough parks facilities to accommodate them. There is a, a tribal park that belongs to the Oneida Nation. It's not obvious to people that that park is open to uh, non-tribal me members because that is in land held in trust. So it's not accessible to the greater uh, population out there. And again, that's not a criticism. It is just what it is. So you have uh, two city parks and you have a, a lot of uh, need and demand out there. So that's why in the very beginning of my term, I've identified expanding the park system and looking to partner with the United Nation and any other entity to expand park opportunities for the far west side. That is a possibility when it comes to fat tire bike, uh, perhaps in different areas. My district is also unique because it's one of the few districts in the city that has conservancies and wetlands and forests those are all things we should preserve that that beautifies that far west side of the district red fox or bad believe it or not go through that park from time to time there's i've heard coyotes the rumors of coyotes going through there so it just seems to me and i have a lot of respect for the parks department james dan great guys i think they've done a lot of really good things but to me it just seems like the fat tire bike people had this like pressing need to recreate, which is a good thing. We looked at Colburn, we looked at Ken Ewers Park, and it's sort of like, okay, that's not going to work. Let's find Henry's Rock Park. And now we're kind of backing away to justify placing it there. And that's not a good feeling. And, and the people on this call is not a fair indication of the people who I've talked to, the emails. I wish I would have consolidated on them. I'll do it for the full city council, but you gotta hear the calls and the emails and the texts that I've received. The neighbors are engaged and active now, and it's just not the right, I, I, I want it to work, I do, but it's just, it's not the right fit. And you can only know that if you go out there and you participate and you watch and you listen to the people that use it daily. So those are my comments. I'm gonna make a motion after the other alder speak, uh, chairman, you know, because it's my communication, if you'll grant me the ability to make the motion when the others speak, I would be happy to do that. Sure. Uh, Alderweary, care to throw in two cents or, oh no, I'm sorry, we got Alder Stoyer first, I said. Well, um, Alderweary, do you wanna go first, otherwise? Go for it, go for it, Mark. All right, well, thank you. Uh, it's a very good conversation tonight. Um, you know, I've lived in Green Bay about 40 years. I moved up from Milwaukee and I, one of the things that really impressed me about Green Bay was the park system that we do have. It's, it's very, there's over 65 parks in this area and I've been to most, most every one of them. And I think when I, when I first moved to town, there were, the uses in the park were such that, you know, I played softball. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of softball leagues. There was, like football, there was uh, hockey, there was any number of things. Now, now you see things where things have adjusted, or now you have cricket, and people are trying to get pickleball here, and fat tire bikes. So, what I'm saying, and some of the citizens brought that up, that uses have changed. You've got drones. You've got <laughs> there's there's a lot of demand 
uh, on our park system. And I think that is a challenge and, you know, games many, many uses. Um, you know, I've been to Hinistra Park. My children went to Lombardi. So we've been over there fairly often and it's a beautiful park. And I, you know, I, I take umbrage with a little bit where citizens say, well, I live in the neighborhood. So in effect, it's kind of my park. You know, it is all of our parks. And I, you know, I go, I went to Baird Creek today with my daughter and hiked out there. It's beautiful. And I live on the west side. So, you know, sometimes you might have to travel a little bit to go some other place. You know, Ken Ewers would be kind of a nice area, but it sounds like some of the fat, fat, fat bike people might not like that as much. Again, you know, there's only two parks in the far west side. We probably need another park or two. That always costs money. But I just wanted to make some comments that, you know, the uses have changed, but um, I had some emails as well from citizens and some of them are fat biker, fat tire bikers. And they're, they're a little against, they don't think it's big enough. You know, it's, the park is too small. There's way too many uses. And like all the Burnett said, you know, the signage would be very difficult to show all the way across. So um, I'm going to read all the emails and I will, reserve judgment until city council but many times i look at what the alder says for his particular his or her particular district and oftentimes i lean that way so i'll wait i'll wait till council but those are my comments for now thank you thank you uh alder weary sure thank you mr chairman um i think uh Alder Gerlach had stated, and this is important too you know there's no good guys or I mean, there's no bad guys or girls here everybody's wanting a good thing, right? More more physical exercise, more opportunities to do that. So um, um, that's that's a good note to start on. Um, I was fortunate to have, you know, in my experience, Fisk Park at one time with a major product project and now Colburn had a major project. And so I know the passion people have for parks that are, are near them, right? You know, there, there does get to be a tendency that they feel an ownership of them. Um, number one for me for this topic was that we don't destroy what's special and unique about the park you know trying to to accommodate as much as we can sometimes by doing that you destroy what was so nice about it in the first place so that that's kind of where i'm coming in to start uh you know it was a relatively passive park low activity for 50 years biking a little bit mostly hiking some running so i I just get the feeling that, that we should pull back on the biking activity and really just look for a new new location for that where they'll feel like it's right for them and let this park be what more what it was meant to be. So that's that's my thoughts. Thanks. Uh, any of the elders, all the other elders present wish to chime in? No? Okay, well then uh, I'll throw my two cents. Um, uh, I, I agree with all the other alders. You know, this is, it's great to have a spirited debate. It's great that our parks are are so used and people are so in, invested in them that uh, uh, we ha we're having this debate. Um, for me, I, I think I, I would just like, uh, as an experiment, I just feel this has been kind of short that we just started using it for fat bikes. and. And there's been a lot of concerns raised, but I don't know how valid they are. It seems to me we, I would like to see it go through the winter and then we could reassess at the end of the winter. Um, and I'm not sure, it, I mean, we wanna get the most out of our, our parks and that's, that, that's all the weird, I think that's the problem. I mean, we're really squeezing uh, all our parks as much as we can. I mean, we wanna protect wildlife. We want to uh, have, you know, uh, and on the sustainability commission, we're trying to work with uh, pollinator corridors and everything. We, we want the city to be uh, user friendly with uh, uh, our fellow na nature uh, critters. Um, but you know, as a city, we 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 are disruptive to their environments, to their habitats. Uh, we do want to uh, get as much uh, entertainment out of our parks. Um, does it get to a point where? We got a park that's too pinched, too squeezed, too overused. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, but I think for me, I would at least like to see uh, till the end, till spring, to get through the winter, 
And I think we should be realistic that if not here, I don't think there's anywhere else to go. I mean, I, I think we have to be realistic and say, if we're going to ax it here, it's axed, it's done. I don't know that we got anywhere, any other land out there that we could convert into a park or any other park. I mean, uh, staff has looked at this. They went with Anissa for a reason. Um, so that that's what's giving me some pause because I really feel if we say no now, we're saying no, period. Uh, it's just not going to happen. And I would like to give it at least a little more time to see if it can happen. Maybe it is uh, too much to ask at that park. You know, just too much usage, but I... I kind of think um, the more you see Johnny Park, the better. I mean, that's that's what we want to do. So uh, for myself, I, I just would like to see it go on a little longer before we actually pull the plug. Because I think when we pull the plug, there's nowhere else on the west side to go. So uh, with that, that's my two cents. Alder Burnett, you have a, uh, a motion? Uh, yeah, so I just want to first... Uh... Yes, T please comment before you make a motion, Alder Brunette. I'd like to hear what you have to say about yeah, that. Certainly, and above all, you know, in these times of government, uh, I commend everyone for being extremely civil, polite, and everyone has a, a strong emotions, connections, either using the park for whatever purpose. And such toxic times, uh, this whole discussion, the whole process from the very beginning has been reaffirming to me the type of people we have in Green Bay, which in my opinion, is the people we have all throughout the country. And so I, I commend everyone for, for this. Unfortunately, in government, a lot of times we, we need villains. You know, hopefully I'm not the villain in this plot, but what I will say, Alder Scannell, I hear you what you're saying, but continuing this spring could cause ir nearly irreversible or long-term damage to the park in the, in the near future. I mean, if in fact we do have Fox Den there, and we do have other wildlife that's flourishing and, and plants and things that really are the beauty of that park. And the, the reason why park users use that for passive recreation, walking, snowshoeing, cross country skiing, and perhaps mountain biking, but at a lower rate of speed or mountain biking with a family of four or five rather than a user group of 20 or 30, all right? So the reasons why people are drawn to that park and the reason why we need to do whatever we can to preserve it would, is the reason why, although I love the idea of a trial period, we tried that for two months. And already the, from what the neighbors have told me, whether this is true or not, but there has been some degradation. I mean, I've, I, I've gotten calls and pictures and hopefully some of you got the pictures as well. And so. I get it. This is why I delayed this discussion for two months because I wanted to allow everyone to speak and I want it to be fair to both sides. And I think that we have accomplished that. Um, I will make a motion, but Alder Gerlach, I, you know, I respect your, your voice and uh, opinion on this, but I'm all for trial periods. This two months was supposed to be the trial period. I don't want any long-term damage to a beautiful park that's attracting wildlife. So but I, I'm against that general idea of alter scan, although I respect your opinion on it. So your motion? Uh, I'll, I'll like, can I make a motion or did you want Yes, to? yes, I didn't want to comment. I wanted to hear your comments oh. before you made a motion. Yeah, well, so my motion would be um, to discontinue the use of, the use and promotion of fat tire bike use at Hinostra Park and direct the Parks Department to work very closely and aggressively, pardon that word, I don't, I don't know how that gets perceived, but aggressively with the fat tire bike users and user groups throughout Green Bay to find a west side location for that sport. How about and, earnestly? Earnestly, it's better than aggressively. Yeah. I, just, I just want some action on it. You know, you have the group, you have like, you know, 20, 30, 50,000 people that are really want this recreation. I want to find a place in Green Bay for them. I just, it's not the right location. That's I'll second right. that. I don't want this to die in the vine. I want some progress. I want, you know, possible location. Even if that means engaging the Brown County Park Department for some partnership with the United second. Okay, so we have a motion by Alder Burnett and a second by Alder Weary. Any further discussion? 
Can I, um, can I just back up a second? Can you repeat the, uh, I'm just, cause I got to put this motion into yep. uh, context here. Yeah. So right uh, now I have to discontinue the use and promotion of Hanistra Park as a location for fat tire biking. Destination for fat tire bike use. By destination. Yeah, and, and um, direct the parks department to work earnestly and consistent, uh, uh, you know, earnestly or actively with the fat tire bike user groups to find another location on the west side of Green Bay for their use. All right, I'm gonna read it one more time just to make sure I have it here. Um, to, to discontinue the use and promotion of the Hinsdra Park as a destination to fat tire bike and to and direct the parks department to earnestly and proactively um, just uh, find a location on the west side for fat tire bike usage or something like that? That's fine. I mean, it serves a purpose, James. Yeah. Okay. I like the word aggressively, but earnestly would be a compromise. You get the idea, though. Assertively? Assertively. <laughs> Vigorously? Actively. Dridently. Uh, intent. Intently. Uh, focused. Yeah. Oh. I'll figure that out. Mr. Chairman, yes? if I could, I'm sure you'll mention this to everyone too, but it is that we're just recommending this to council and council meets next week on Tuesday. So there's eight other older people who will be there who will vote on this yet. So whatever happens here, there's still another, you know, and yes, you will get a chance to talk on it if you want. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is just recommend, the committee recommends to the council, the council decides. So, so was the motion was by Burnett and seconded by Weary? Yes. Okay. And were you going to read it back or are you good? Uh, to discontinue the use and promotion uh, of Hanistra Park as a destination for fat tire biking and uh, direct the parks department to earnestly and actively find a location for fat tire biking on the west side. Yes. Sound good? Yes, sir. Uh, Alder Gerlach, did you have more you wanted to say? I just wondered if Alder Stoyer or Alder Dorf would, would like to comment on the motion before we vote because they won't get to vote and I'd like to hear their opinion. Well, they... Oh, I think so. Uh, I also have something further I'm going to add before I'll I... Just, I'll just chime in. Thank you, Alder Gerlach, for that. Um, you know, one thing that is stated is that usually these committees have four alders on them. And many times with some of these meetings, and I've been involved in many long meetings on other issues, it is good to have other alders in the discussion because we will be voting on it eventually. So I feel very good that at least I had this opportunity to listen to all the citizens and to the professionals and the various folks who are involved in this. Many times I do listen to the alder in a particular area because they know their district very well. And I will defer many times that way. I haven't always voted with the alder, but many times I will listen to their reasoning and really take that take that to heart. But uh, I thought it was a very good discussion. It was very professional. It was very well uh, orchestrated. That nobody got out of line. Uh, I can't always say that for all the discussions we've had over time. But you know, sometimes issues are very emotional, and uh, it, it gets difficult. But I think it went uh, off well and. I will look at all the emails and I will read this over and I will do due diligence at council on Tuesday. Thank you. Alder. Thank you. I'm, I'm torn. I haven't made a decision yet. I won't be making a decision until Tuesday. Um, there are certainly good arguments on either side. So I, I don't have a decision right now. 
there, there's a lot to absorb here. But I, I would like to echo Alder Steuer's comments about the civility that I certainly enjoyed and, and that we don't always have when we have these public discussions. So thank you for everyone for being so kind and civil during this discussion. Although I feel like we got to bust this up. <laughs> uh, we, uh, 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 the only comment I'd like to make is uh, I'm not going to support the motion and it's because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's because we're talking about physical degradation and nature is very resilient. I'm not too much worried about physical degradation. We're not dealing with pollution or anything that's permanent, like a, a development. So I, I would still like to see more time to see if this can't be worked out. Cause I really feel though, uh, you know, Parks is gonna work with bikers to find another place on the west side. I feel pretty strongly that that's a wishful thinking. That ain't gonna happen. This is an ISRA or nothing, I think. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna stick to my guns there uh, about uh, giving it more time. So that's my two cents. Uh, shall we vote on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. No. So that's 2-2. Two, two. The motion fails. Um, I would recommend forwarding to council with no recommendation. We could turn as, it much as, hate to, as much as I hate to do that, uh, I, I can't accept any other motion. Uh, unless someone wants to make one, I'm fine. Yeah, it's good. I'll second that. Well, I would support that. Uh, without a... How about we kind of... Because the motion... The point of order isn't that exactly what you just did. Yeah. yeah. Or, Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's going to go to council. You're going to pull it, Jesse. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. intended as a, my comments weren't intended as a motion. So okay, okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's some way we should tweak this to give more direction, uh, consideration, possible action, and the use effect. I, I think that's that could go to committee as is. That can go to council as is. And uh, Alder Burnett can pull it, and I'm sure we'll have another great discussion. And I'm sure we'll have. Uh, more discussion from everyone. Please notify all your friends and neighbors. And, and all Canada, could I just uh, yep. yeah, comment on. for those here and for those who are going to be watching this meeting uh, video recording? Mm -hmm. uh, this will go to the full city council as previously mentioned Tuesday. Uh, the full city council will discuss this, and it's then a vote of the council whatever they decide. And that motion could be anything. Uh, you know, if it's a six-six tie, the mayor can break the tie. So I encourage everyone to reach out to the full city council, and we'll carry the, the conversation there. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, this goes on to the council as is, and we will move on to informational when we're ready here, James. All right, we're ready. And the uh, director's report. Um, uh, director's report was included in your packet. Uh, once again, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just point out a few, uh, few things that you're, some of you might be aware of. But uh, you know, we have been uh, preparing and trying to get ready to uh, flood our, our hockey and skating rinks, and also uh, try to run uh, Triangle Hill tubing and our winter other winter recreation amenities that we have but unfortunately due to the weather and also the the lack of snow uh we're kind of uh unfortunately haven't been able to do that hopefully tomorrow we get some good snow uh and we get some freezing temps so people can start uh, playing ice hockey and skating at uh, one of our many ice rinks um and also hopefully we get snow so we can groom the trails um and get them back in good shape uh, I wanted to mention the Wildlife Sanctuary this year is celebrating its 85th anniversary. Uh, so we're, you know, planning uh, hopefully for a, um, you know, where we can run some events this year and COVID I know is going to go away and we're going to all uh, be out there enjoying these activities all summer long. So uh, hopefully that happens. Um, but we'll, we'll activities regardless of whatever the, the level of, of that is. But 
Uh, I did want to point out, uh, which uh, I believe Alder Stoyer definitely knows because it's in his district, but uh, this week we started removing, uh, we had a, began a large scale ash tree removal project at Perkins Park. So we uh, began that with our forestry crews this week. Uh, they'll be in there a couple weeks to remove uh, the emerald ash bar trees that unfortunately have been in, uh, infested and uh, potentially are starting to create a safety risk for park users and patrons. So uh, we are gonna, once we get those trees removed, we're gonna, we have some ideas about maybe strategizing uh, on what the use of Perkins Park will be going forward. Uh, so we're not gonna replant the trees right away. If anybody's uh, wondering about that, we're actually gonna uh, discuss what that park uh, kind of long-term uh, area might be used for. So that'll be something uh, in the future here. And I think um, that is it for me. Anybody have any questions or comments about the director's report? I do. Yes. Yeah. All the girl. Uh, I would just like to thank you, James, for another excellent report. And I would like to thank you for all your hard work while the director has been on leave. I know it's been tough and you've worked really hard. I really appreciate your dedication. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. And I would just like to add that I know uh, Director Dishsight does check in with you from time to time. Next time you talk with him, please extend our regards to him and hope everything is going well. I will do. And, uh, with that, our next meeting is January 27th, 2021. So exciting. While this panel, uh, I know this is a little odd border, but someone's raising their hand. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Collier, it looks like. I can't see anybody. So I. Uh, I just wonder if he's here for the uh, Public Works Committee or. No. If, if well, it's all right to talk, I I'll, I'll, we'll open the floor for you. We, that's, we got to do that procedurally. Let's open the floor. Let's we'll open the floor by Alder Burnett. Okay. Second by Alder Weary. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the floor is not open. Uh, you've already spoken before, so just state your name. Uh, thank you. It's Mike Collier, 1858 Oakdale Avenue, Green Bay. Uh, there was We were second on the list as far as things on the agenda, talking about the old Preble Neighborhood Park and the location of uh, the new park equipment. And uh, we sent out, a survey was sent out through the our association, and uh, I just got the results uh, this afternoon, it, which is not a big deal, but we, we had a park meeting on Monday night, and it was never said that they were going to uh, support the move of the playground equipment to the to the park staff, and I'm just okay. wondering where everything's at and what's going yep. on. Yeah, Mike, I, I don't want to interrupt you, of course, um, but I think uh, potentially that agenda item will be on the next park committee. Uh, it's not an agenda item on this park's committee. That was a, a potentially going to be an agenda item on the January 27th park's committee. I thought I, and I could be wrong, I thought I saw it on on nope. this one. That's the only reason I've been uh, here. It's, it's, it's not on our agenda, and we cannot speak on items that aren't on our agenda. Uh, we'd be flagged for Oh, talking I, business about something that hasn't been publicly noticed. So uh, we'll take that up, but probably next one, then it sounds like next at the 27th. Oh, okay, I appreciate that. I was under the impression that we should refer, <laughs> should for sure be at this one. So mm -hmm. as right. well as the next one, not a problem. Yeah, okay, sorry. Thank right. you very much, everyone. I, uh, I was amazed at how things kind of work. It's very good and I appreciate it. And yes, James, you've done a wonderful job. I sure appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Burnett. Second by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Floor is now closed. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. So moved by Alder Burnett. Seconded by Alder Weary. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, no. When are we coming back for our next?